Hey everybody, well I'm at Hazemere Motorcycles and today I have the Suzuki GSX 250R to take out and I'm quite excited about this because it's a smaller engine bike and I love smaller engine bikes. So I'm six foot four. This does feel a little bit small as a small bike, but it's actually perfectly comfortable because you know you've got an upright seating position, the, the bars are slightly higher, so I'm actually very comfortable riding it. I just do feel very on top of it. Now there is an elephant in the room with this bike, which I'm gonna talk about straight away, and I think most people will think of it. This bike is an A2 bike, obviously. Uh, but it is only a 250 of 20 just under 25 brake horsepower. Obviously the limit of the A2 is quite a bit higher than that. And I honestly do not know why Suzuki have made a bike that far under the available power. They did the same with the Van Van 200 and I got that to a point because you know, it's more of a style bike. There was no need for that thing to be like a 300 or something, but this is a 300 I think could have been done. Or even, or even a 400. But there is one fact about this bike which is pretty amazing. And it's, it costs just about 200 quid less than a YZF125. So we're gonna have to do some real world tests on this thing. Can it sit on a motorway comfortably at 70 odd? Right, sixth gear, 70 miles an hour, eight and a bit thousand RPM. Surprising for a 250. But it's still got some left. So it will sit at 70. It's quite high up in the RPM range, if I'm honest. But it wasn't uncomfortable, doesn't feel like the bike's gonna explode. Then the question is, does it have overtaking power? Not bad. It's very stable at speed. The front end's got a nice heft to it, so it's not, you know, you don't feel that, I don't want to say one, two, five, but you know, the light, light bike feel of, of unstableness or unsteadiness. This is very stable, very nice feeling. So most ways, yeah, it's all right. It's not the fastest bike out there. It's a little high in the rev range at 70. However, I own a uh, Suzuki DRZ 400SM, which has actually been bought out to a 440 and this is happier at 70 than that is, so CC isn't everything. The, uh, the fuel injection on it is actually nice and smooth, but then I suppose it hasn't got a huge amount of power to really jerk you around. Let's try this bump. The ride is good. It's firm, it's definitely got firmness, but I've just went through, you know, an inch dropped drain and it wasn't a jar, it was just a nice soft, soft dip. So comfort wise, very good. I would definitely love to try this if I was a foot shorter, I'll be honest. Now this has got a disc on the rear and only a single on the front. It doesn't really need to double. It's very, very light and it's only a 250. So you're not going that fast and you haven't got that much inertia to slow you down. So one big disc should be more than enough. 
and I'll, uh, I'll need to find a spot without a car behind me to try that out. But where a little bike like this can win out is in the corners, because lightness equals flickableness. And I am a little bit tall, I'll be honest, to properly lean this thing. It feels a bit disconcerting for me, but it's great. That was great fun. Very stable and planted. Suspension is really good on this. They have, these are the sorts of roads that this bike's made for. You know, on the motorway, yeah, it's 70, feels a little bit underpowered. But on the, you know, the 50, 60 mile an hour roads, with some nice corners on it, you get to play with the gears a lot, you know, choose the right gear, get the right entry and everything. Not that so I am getting the right entry. <laughs> but you get to play with it. And this is fun. I'm having the fun that you have on a 125, but with the power that you've always wanted a 125 to have, you know, because they've always been, you, always, you want that little bit more, and it's got quite a bit more than that little bit more. I, st I do still think it could have had a bit more than this. I think I think a 300 might have been might have been a good idea. You're right, dude. Yeah, you're you're right. Oh, that's right. Then. I just stopped, uh, admired you. Fair play, mate. Thank you. See you later. Why's it got a shift light? It's got a shift light! Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's come to life in these roads! See, you get the bike in the right place and all of a sudden it makes sense. Still think it should have a little bit more power. What does it sound like in the tunnel? Yeah, you can't hear it. This has got a stock exhaust on it and it is very quiet. <laughs> it's got it's got brilliant character this little thing. All small bikes tend to have a character. It's plucky. And through all of this, I'm getting 95 miles to the gallon. I don't know what insurance group it's in, but I'm going to imagine it's in a relatively low one. Uh, so your tax on this would be, what's it currently, at like £38 a year? Come on. As a 250 that looks great. I personally think they should have taken that line in rather than out. But, you know, that's, you know, it's so, so nitpicky, but, but it's great. It's a little 250. It's got a nice little tail. Obviously, it could benefit massively from a tail tidy. Um... But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks good. What more can you really say about it? Wing mirrors are quite nice as well. Those with weird adjustment. They've got adjustment here and adjustment here, and it, you, you can really get them where you want them. Um, as for parts quality... Oh, I'll take my gloves off for this. Plastics feel good. Seat's an interesting material, but it's it's a very uh, very comfy seat. I found grippy metal tank. Yeah, very very solid sounding plastics. The levers, standard Suzuki levers, adjustable for the uh, 
for the front brake only, but they're perfectly adequate. The rear sets and these plates, that's metal, this is metal. Um, chrome rear brake lever looks a little cheap, very strong, well put together, there's not, nothing going to go wrong with it, but it doesn't really fit in. Could have put something slightly better on than that. Gear shifter. Yeah, gear shifter's chromed, but, you know, perfectly usable. Nothing wrong with that, really. As I've said before, Suzuki very often put sort of cheaper parts on where they know you're going to probably change them. Now, when I say cheaper, it doesn't mean not adequate or bad quality or anything. They're just not, you know, they're just basic. And that's a very good example of a, a basic tool for the job. Exhaust is quite large. Um, can you remove the baffle out of that? I don't know, there is a screw there that looks like you possibly could, but yeah, it's very quiet. Probably sound amazing with a, a little pipe on it. I love a look at the controls, but it's completely bog standard. You know, clutch, pass light, high beam, low beam, hazards, indicators, horn, kill switch, start, that's it. So a nice little display. You know, you've got your revs across here, uh, speed, time, gear position, your trip, uh, A and B, and your uh, MPG fuel gauge. That's uh, the uh, the shift light. You know, you've got your um, neutral indicator, engine warning light, and oil check light. I've noticed that's come on, but I've checked on the spyglass of the engine, and that seems absolutely fine. So what's going on there, I can't comment on. Um, but yeah, you know, very basic, very simple. All very clear. In the, so you can see, right, I don't know if you can see this, I'm letting the sun get on it fully. I can fully read that here, in the sun, out sun. I'm trying to see what colour it comes up at night. It looks bluish, like a blue-white. Yeah, I think it's like a, a blue-white light. Very cool. I didn't think to look under here. Which one does this undo? I guess it's this one. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's, there's not a lot in there. There's a little bit of storage. You get your toolkit seems to consist of an Allen key. It's interesting. Um, yeah, that is what it is. Other way around. Um, considering pillions, pillion seat, reasonable size. Uh, pegs, quite standard. Quite high up. You know, you wouldn't get me on the back of this, but you wouldn't get me on the back of most things. <laughs> Well, the, uh, the check oil light's gone away now, so I'm not quite sure what that was all about. No, it, it, you do ride this with the style of a 125 where you, know, you don't really have much pull out of the corner so much. So what you have to do is carry speed through. Good entry speed, keep the speed, and then exit with it. and. It's great, and, and that's what's a lot of fun with it, that it's, it's not about just getting through a corner and squirting on the other side. It's about finding the speed through the corner. I am personally of the belief that riding a bike like this with less power will teach you so much more about riding a bike than having riding something than you know that's got loads and loads of power because you're learning the riding skill rather than just squirting. You know, you get people who ride 600s and then say, ah, oh, you know, it's not enough for me, I need to get a 1,000. And if you actually sort of got them to try and ride to what that bike's ability is, they would be nowhere near it. But they go and get the 1,000 because it gives them, they seem faster because they're able to pull away quicker out of each corner. And it's still displaying 94 miles to the gallon. If you ever needed, you know, a good argument as to why a smaller engine is good, there's one of them. In today's fuel costs, that's going to save you quite a bit of money. So where does it fall into the market? I think pretty much everywhere. You could have fun on this. You can commute on it. It's very narrow, so it's going to be great going through the uh, through traffic, you know, filtering. I can't think of a situation other than off-roading. 
or it may be, <laughs> that this wouldn't be great at. Come on. Let's hypothetically say that at 80, this bike has got uh, about 3,000 RPM left. So maybe not the triple digits, maybe 90 is the, the absolute top end. Maybe if you got a bit of a downhill, you really tucked, you weren't my size, maybe then. The chassis feels great, the suspension, the brakes are powerful enough. You know, they could be a little bit more powerful, but it's enough. You know, it, the handling is lovely, the feel is amazing, it's great. I think it's 10 brake horsepower off of being quite a lot better, maybe 15. It, it doesn't ruin it, but you do feel like, particularly when you're on the motorway, I wish I had 10 or 15 more brake horsepower. So there we go. Thank you very much, Hazelmere Motorcycles. That is a brilliant, brilliant little 250. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to say, but it should be a 300. It should have a little bit more. And I fully agree with you. But that isn't to take away from the fact that that is a fantastic, fun little bike to take down the A roads. Definitely a good bike to learn on. There we go. Don't forget to like the video, and I'll catch you next time.